Kazaa. I don't even know if you can see that in the camera. Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I spoke with the a rocket scientist the other day about real estate, and I want to tell you that story. I actually want to tell you a bunch of stories. I'm going to share with you what happened at the range the other day. I'm going to talk about, well, it's about real estate, and it's about knowledge and understanding, and something that a lot of people don't really grasp in today's society. Um, if I remember, I'll tell you a story about a $35 million real estate transaction and how it started to go wrong in a boardroom. And then I'll tell you about someone's company I know that lost $200 million in market cap, cut literally in half because he didn't want to take an idea I had. All right, so where do we start? Ah, the rocket scientist. So I'm speaking with someone the other day that owns real estate in one of the most expensive places in the country. As a matter of fact, they spend around $700 a square foot. A square foot, 700 bucks. That's absolutely insane. I'm not used to those kind of prices. And we were speaking about a very prestigious career that he had. As a matter of fact, a real estate agent that knew me told me that he wanted to introduce us because he was one of the most brilliant people he'd ever met in his life. So I introduced myself and was speaking to him and talking about his illustrious career. And I don't want to say too much about what he did because it actually will probably give it away. And the focus turned on to real estate because he asked what I do. And we were talking about market cycles and corrections. And he goes, well, it's not going to go down. Not this time. He goes, the market's been on a terror since 2012. As a matter of fact, the area that he was speaking of, um, where they pay around $700 a square foot, actually saw a correction in 2012. I think he may have had his dates off, but that was the date that he gave me. And he said, it's, it's been on a tear. There, there's no end in sight. I said, well, you do realize why that terror has been going on ever since, let's say, let's give it the 2012 date. And he looked at me a little sideways. And it's interesting how people, when they don't have the answer, rather than say, I, I don't know why, you just sort of pause. They don't want to appear like they don't know what they're talking about. And again, I'm talking to someone with an IQ that's in the stratosphere, right? Who am I? I couldn't even make it through high school. I said, because the Federal Reserve has had rates at pretty much zero, right around zero ever since then. And just for a little bit of time, did they raise rates? And then they really rose rates just recently. You didn't even know how to comprehend that. You could tell. He, he couldn't even take it in because he was so focused on his thesis in a career field that he's never been a part of. And I found that interesting. I was thinking about this morning. You know, our, our world is run by people that are esteemed very highly because of something they've accomplished. And then people seem to think that they're the guru of everything. Whatever they say is sticks. Or at least those people believe that's what's going on. And I, I, I was thinking about it. I'm like, you know, this is a really neat way to encourage people around the world right now through a video, through a story. Because you're talking to someone right now, you're listening to the ninja barely made it through high school. As a matter of fact, I have a difficult time reading. I, there's some things I can do well. I can pull percentages out of my head, sort of, that is one interesting thing, but I could barely do math. Um, I got all kinds of things wrong with me. But there are a couple things that I do really good, and I just tended to focus on those, and I became successful, right? As a matter of fact, I used to be a lot more intelligent than I am today. You know, I'm slowly getting it back, but in 2014, I could spout off some stuff that even surprised me. But because I spoke against my abilities, because so many people rolled their eyes at me, I started saying, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. Oh, what? Who'd listen to me? And I actually cursed myself. That's a warning to a lot of people right now. Don't curse yourself. Your tongue is a very, very important object. It's actually a weapon. And it's either going to build you up or it will cut you down. So I have since repented of that. And um, so it was interesting as I was talking to this gentleman, you know, he thinks his real estate's going to go up forever. And we're actually in the middle of an epic crisis, an epic collapse, exactly in the time frame of what happened from 2005 to 2008. We are now over halfway through this. And we are now at the point where the banks are failing. <laughs> just like the beginning of 2008. Uh, but nobody really realized it until CNBC told you. 
you know, the, the puppet masters, the powers that be told you, okay, we are now in a real estate collapse. Lehman Brothers is closed. They locked the doors. Well, when I started this channel, I said, they're going to find out way ahead of time. I'm going to bring them through. And now, as a matter of fact, that was the starting of this channel's videos. I said, hey, everybody on the Economic Ninja, I'm going to walk you through an economic collapse. I'm going to show you exactly what it feels like when I went through in 2005. And, um, you know, so there was that was that one story. And there's another story. I was, I was here. Let me, I went to the range the other day. I went to a little pew-pew class. And uh, I rushed it. I will admit, I rushed it. There we go. There, there we go. There we go. See, nothing. So I shouldn't have rushed it. I should have taken my time and just destroyed the red. But I got to meet a subscriber. Um, uh, two subscribers, actually. Um, uh, a woman and her husband. And I didn't get a long time to chat with them. But the topic of real estate came up. And she said she was selling a place in Montana. And she was getting ready for this and getting really excited. She, she could obviously, you could tell by her words, could see the signs and, and was in. And it was really exciting for me. I always wish that I had more time to talk with you guys every time I see you. Um, but I, I, and I was explaining to her, she actually went to the Silver Symposium. I said, man, that wrecked me. That show just wrecked me <laughs> emotionally and mentally. Uh, because this has been such a, a crazy experience for me. The last four years to meet so many amazing people. And it's the hardest thing to hear when someone says a kind word to me. Or I watch all your videos. That's probably one of the weirdest things ever to me. I'm like, why are you doing it? I wouldn't watch me. I need to stop cursing myself. Please forgive me for that. But it's interesting, the difference between a rocket scientist and this lady is in healthcare. And the perception of the market, the rocket scientist only owned his own home, it appeared to be, and was spouting how real estate's never going to crash. The healthcare person owns uh, residential uh, real estate rentals and sees the crash. It's an interesting paradigm. Our society has been uh, has spent too much time uplifting those in powers of position or positions of power, you know, fame, and the elites have enjoyed that. Some are slimy little uh, scum that just hide underneath uh, couches. They're pale and just never seen the light of day because they're cowards and they run, they run and rule through money, right? Others are the ones that are in the spotlight right in front of us and they have absolutely no concept of what's going on. And the reason why I wanted to tell you these stories, oh yeah, the boardroom story. Let me tell you those two. Because this is just a story not to toot my own horn, but it's in, I want to tell it in a way that emboldens you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do an exercise right now. There's 670 of you on right now. Can you type out your gift out loud? Just type it in the live chat. Or if this isn't live when you're watching it, type it in the comment section. I want you to, I'm about to tell you one of my gifts. And the reason why I want you to do it is because I want you to, I want you to say it out loud because you need to build yourself up and you have to have um, a, a gift. So like um, what I mean is, let me give an example. My gift is being able to spot social cues and misunderstandings the second they happen before they get into a big one. I know that sounds crazy. It's a crazy gift. Um, <clears throat> my real estate brokerage. I was neither a real estate agent or a real estate broker when I built a real estate brokerage. I know that sounds crazy. All you have to do in the state of California is get a broker record, put together a board of directors, um, a corporation, a corporation, not an LLC, and uh, abide by all the rules and laws of the state of California when it comes to the real estate association, realtors association. And, um, and you build a company. In the first six months, we did $50 million in transactions. I know that sounds crazy for three people two of which were not real estate agents, <laughs> and one that was a broker, and had zero, just so you know, the broker had zero experience. Zero. But in the state of California, you can become a real estate broker in a challenge exam if you have your college degree. And since I knew real estate, we helped this person challenge the test. So $50 million in the first year. But one of them was $35 million. It was a massive property. Um, and I was working out a deal because I knew the lingo and how to talk with hedge funds and uh, retirement uh, companies, pension funds. And the whole deal was breaking down. And so I was helping with negotiations, found out really quick, but by, by 
California real estate law, you can't do that unless you're a licensed agent. So I went and challenged the test. Set up a, this was a six month escrow, by the way. I went and challenged the test, passed the first time, got into a meeting, sitting in a meeting with a big pension fund and its intermediary, oh, it actually was its intermediary company. And the, the farmers, the farming family, I walk in and the farmer says, who the heck are you? What are you doing in this meeting? And I said, I'm, I'm one of the partners at such and such agency. And I'm, I'm here to, uh, to make sure that the talks don't break down. He goes, excuse me, we don't need, and he was pretty rude actually. One of my partners stepped in because it was a family friend and said, hey, this is my partner. Just wait to see what he does. They're all, hopefully you know, don't need him. We're in this meeting with a bunch of wealthy, uh, smart individuals. And I say smart because they would be the first one to tell you how smart they are. They're those kind of guys, right? Pretty intimidating. So I'm just sitting, they introduce me and, and no joke. It was the most awkward conversation ever. Cause the owner of the company, one of the companies goes, here's so-and-so he's here to, uh, I don't even know why he's here. It was one of those things was like awkward. Halfway through the meeting, a gentleman asks a question. And that question is answered by the other party. And I'm looking at facial cues and they move on to the next question. All right, cool, next question. And I go, well, wait, hold on, hold on. And I point at him and I said, sir, no offense, but you didn't, you didn't get your question answered. And he goes, and everyone looks at him. He gets immediately embarrassed. He goes, no, 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 I'm good. And I go, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm not meaning to him. This is what I'm here for. And I point at the gentleman that answered the question. And I said, he didn't understand you. Let me have him repeat it. And I'll just repeat the, under, the answer. He repeated it completely wrong. Right then, everything changed in the meeting. They knew why I was here. I know it's the weirdest gift ever, but it's my gift. At the end of the meeting, it happened three times. By the third time, people are laughing. The owner of the company walks out shakes my hand and apologizes for how rude he was to me. He says that entire deal would have broken down if you were not here. That's my gift. But the problem is in our society, a lot of us don't move inside of our gifts. You know, we don't have to, school is great. School is great. My kids go to college um, because it, sadly, um, the two uh, fields they want to go into, you physically cannot do it without a degree. Okay. So there are, there is a need for school at a certain level, but just because you didn't go to school or let's say even you, though you went to school and you're not exactly where you want to be in life, doesn't mean you have to accept that. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't. Um, I am, I say this humbly, like I'm a nobody. I'm just a dude with a bro hawk and a dream. And that dream has changed over the years. And the current dream is to bring a million people alongside of me. One of those crazy guys, I'm talking about me, that understands that this market's going to collapse and let's crush it. You know, when I was making like a hundred grand a year on the side of my firefighter job, selling trailers or tractors or palm trees, whatever it was, it was no fun being around my friends that I truly loved that were losing their homes or um, not able to live their life the way they wanted to because they didn't have the finances anymore. That was no fun. Now I will tell you that today, most of those friends still think I'm a, a whack job, which is totally fine. I've, I've grown to accept this, but I went out and found new friends and I found you guys. And I really mean that. But I will tell you, if you've met me in public, you'll know that uh, I get really awkward. My, my, <laughs> I've gotten better at it, my son says, but it's, it's, it's weird being recognized or uh, the ones that it's really weird is the ones that know who you are and, and they just act a little different. You just, and you, you don't know what, to, you know, um, I'm definitely a weirdo, uh, <laughs> but that's why I wanted you to put your gifts. You see, you can't make it through this next crash unless you move inside of your gifts. And then when you're finding that you need help because you, your gifts don't work in the situation to get you in life where you want to go, 
you need to you need to couple up with other people. There's strength in numbers. You know, my side hustles took a whole new turn as far as dollar value when I took on a partner, which was my best friend, Charlie. Everyone say hi to Charlie. I'm sure he'll be watching this one. Um, he, it was a whole different realm because both of us had strengths that were opposite of each other. And then we also had weaknesses, which were opposite of each other. And when we combined, it was a beautiful thing. It was, it was really, he's, it's been the only part business partner that I, you know, that I really, truly, it is just a different thing. I've had a lot of business partners. You know, I want people to understand that knowledge is totally different than wisdom. Knowledge is knowing something. You learn it either from a book or from someone else, from a, a YouTube video. Wisdom is being able to impart that knowledge to the right people or into the right situation at the right time. That's the difference between wisdom and knowledge. There are a lot of knowledgeable people running around this world that have zero wisdom. They're flaky, they're flighty, they're, you know, they esteem themselves. And I hope that these words affirm something in your heart right now. Because, and, or maybe in your mind, which again, those are two totally different regions of your body also having totally different purposes. Your heart is what brings out passion. Your mind is what brings knowledge, right? Every once in a while, I feel led to just do a video like this, which may sound like rambling to a lot of you, but um, I've got to be led because what's coming is going to be really, really scary for a lot of people. It's going to be rough. But when you knew it was coming ahead of time and you did some things to prepare for it, it's going to be okay. And I want to see you, all of you, be the next millionaires that make it to that level. Or if you're already a millionaire, I want you to be a centimillionaire. Because honestly, you are in one heck of a group. You're in a group that watches the weirdest dude with the weirdest haircut, not because of the fancy editing or my pedigree or lack, it's definitely a lack thereof, right? You watch because there's a resignation, uh, you, it, the message resonates with you. And that's very powerful. And I have to say from the bottom of my heart, I'm so grateful to all of you around the world. I, it still blows me away. I do, I do enjoy it. I, do, I, I enjoy meeting you. I enjoy hearing your stories. You uplift my life every single day. Thank you. I hope you all have an amazing day. I hope you just absolutely crush it this week. Now I'm going to go crush it in my own way. The Economic Ninja is out.